right. Good evening. Welcome, Cornerstone Baptist Church. If you would stand, and uh, we're going to sing page 257, In the Service of the King, as we stand this evening. Good to see each and everyone out tonight. I am happy in the service of the King. Page 257, In the Service of the King. I am happy in the service of the King. I am happy, oh so happy. I have peace and joy that nothing else can bring in the service of the King. In the service of the King, every talent I will bring. I have peace and joy and blessing in the service of the King. I am happy in the service of the King. I am happy, oh so happy, through the sunshine and the shadow I can sing, in the service of the King, in the service of the King, every talent I will bring, I have peace and joy and blessing in the service of the King. Verse 3 there. I am happy in the service of the king. I am happy, oh so happy. To his guiding hand forever I will cling. In the service of the king. In the service of the king. Every talent I will bring. I have peace and joy and blessing in the service of the King. I am happy in the service of the King. I am happy, oh so happy. All that I possess to him I gladly bring in the service of the King. In the service of the King, every talent I will bring. I have peace and joy and blessing in the service of the King. Amen. Grace singing, you can be seated. And we'll have our missions letter at this time. Good evening. How's everyone this evening? Uh, tonight's missionary letter is from the Mislin family. Anybody know where the Mislins are to? Philippines. Philippines. Very good, Pastor. Um, so the Mislins are to Metro Manila in the Philippines. This is their March letter. Uh, it says, Praise the Lord. It's the first section title. Uh, Thank you for all those who have prayed for our interview date with the Philippine Consulate General. We passed with flying colors and have since received the corresponding passports and paperwork. This dual citizenship status will now allow us long-term access to the Philippines for missions work. March 22nd, departure date. Praise the Lord, we now have a date that we will head back to the field full time. We were asked to take part in our Sending Churches Missions Conference this month, after which we will head to the field, departing March 22nd. Please pray for negative COVID tests, which are still required, for non-vaxxed individuals, and please pray for safe traveling mercies for us. More open doors. Just a few weeks ago, the new Philippine president, Bongbong Marcos, signed a deal with the United States for the installation of five U.S. military bases in the Philippine Islands. This is a big deal, seeing as previous administrations for the past 30 years have been against the idea, and the move was made because China has continued its aggression and its attempts to take over the South China Sea and all of the Southeast Asia. China has already installed weaponized artificial islands in Philistine, Philippine waters. The installation of these five American bases will serve to combat China's aggression and also Muslim extremists in the South. It is our prayer and belief that these bases will serve as a great open door for the gospel to flourish in these five cities. 50 years ago in the 1970s, my father was called to preach as a U.S. Marine on a similar U.S. base in the Philippines. Farewell, my brethren. Pictured to the right are some of the precious Filipino souls 
fruit to your account that God has given us here in Michigan. We have said our goodbyes and left them in good hands of an ongoing local church discipleship. We praise the Lord for using us in this past season of in-between and now onward, forward, on the mission of God. Uh, therefore, my beloved brethren, brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. 1 Corinthians fifteen fifty-eight. Thank you for your faithfulness to the cause of Christ, for God's glory, uh, the Mizzou thing. Do we have any additions to the prayer letter this evening from the floor? You got some going in now? Okay. All good. Pastor will get those when he comes up with announcements. Uh, let's look to the Lord in prayer. Uh, dear Lord, thank you for allowing us to be in your house this evening. Thank you for the safe traveling mercies with the rain that's going on this week. We know um, the grass and the earth needs it to start a spring. We ask for uh, safety for our members and families as they travel. Uh, we ask your blessing on tonight's service, uh, the Spanish service in the C-Wing, as well as the kids' programs. Be with the teachers, uh, as well as Pastor Morton. Uh, give them the words that you would have them to speak. Open up our hearts for what you'd have for us from your word this evening. We thank you for the report uh, from the Mislins back to the Philippines, that they will be able to head back to the field coming up later this month. Um, or actually, they just recently went. We praise you for that, that they were able to get their uh, dual citizenship, that they would have more permanent access to the field that you've called them to. Uh, we ask a blessing on those works as well as their uh, integration into those new American bases as they're built. We ask a blessing on their ministry in the Philippines. Uh, and thank you that you provide us the ability to support them. Uh, be with the song service tonight. Allow it to uplift um, your name and through song that we can worship and praise you that way. Um, be with those that are on the prayer sheet. Uh, we know those that are sick and can't be here or um, possibly grieving with lost loved ones. Uh, we ask your blessing on those families. Guide those doctors' hands and those that are instrumental in their recovery. We know that you're the great physician and that all of our lives are under your control and blessing. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you would, let's stand once again. Well, this will be our handshaking song this evening. My sins are blotted out, I know. Amen. What a wondrous message in God's Word. What a wondrous message in God's Word. My sins are blotted out, I know. If I trust in His redeeming blood, my sins are blotted out, I know. My sins are blotted out, I know. My sins are blotted out, I know. They are buried in the depths of the deepest sea. My sins are blotted out, I know. Let's take the time to greet each other with a handshake this evening, if you would.
We'll sing the last verse, two and three. Now are we free? Wrong song, wrong song. <laughs> wrong. Once my heart, there we go. Okay. Once my heart was black, but now what joy. My sins are blotted out, I know. I have peace that nothing can destroy. My sins are blotted out, I know. My sins are blotted out, I know. My sins are blotted out, I know. They are buried in the depths of the deepest sea. My sins are blotted out, I know. Listening that last verse, I shall stand. I shall stand someday before my king. My sins are blotted out, I know. With the ransomed host, I then shall sing. My sins are blotted out, I know. My sins are blotted out, I know. My sins are blotted out, I know. They are buried in the depths of the deepest sea. My sins are blotted out, I know. Amen. Grace singing, good following along there. And you can be seated and we'll have some announcements. All right, well, good evening. Welcome to Cornerstone Baptist Church. We're so happy that you've gathered here in person and also tuned in online. And we're looking forward to what God has for us tonight. A couple of announcements are, don't forget about the March 30th uh, gospel concert, inspiration concert at Southside Middle School. And if you signed up, please just drop that payment in the plate, mark gospel concert, and the money will go to the right place. And we're looking forward to a good time together. Church vehicle will depart from the carport <coughs> at 515. And so uh, looking forward to that. Also on the table, there's the uh, Church Softball League sign-up sheet, and we're going to be ordering the t-shirt soon, so if you're interested in playing, please sign up, and uh, you can also uh, make a payment to my wife, or also uh, drop the money in the plate marked softball. Please make a mark on your calendars for April 12th through 16th for our missions conference, looking forward to it, and then the Wednesday, uh, April 12th at 5.30 is the International Meal Time Together. And then Easter is coming up soon. Easter service is coming up very soon. So make sure we're inviting folks, getting the word out about it. And uh, if you haven't signed up yet, please sign up for the Sunrise Breakfast. And that's for the teenagers to raise some money for camp. And uh, I know they'll appreciate your business. Quite a few people on the prayer list. I want to give you updates and then we'll uh, follow up at the end of the service today. But the Meredith's update <coughs> on the Meredith's is he, is be he is, was moved to rehab today. And uh, they're, they're probably going to uh, be faced with some decisions of what to do with them afterward. So please be in prayer for the family for uh, wisdom with that. Um, did say that he's going to be in a lot of pain being moved. Uh, he's going to be in pain, just, just the transfer process. But he is, the good news is he is up and walking around with a brace. And so he's shown uh, some significant progress. And we praise the Lord for that. Um, an addition is Matt Price. His, I think it's his nephew's fiance has cancer, and that's spreading, and they have stopped treatments. And so Matt texted me before church. He'd asked prayer for his nephew's fiance. And I just found out yesterday, too, that a young man, probably in his early 20s, um, I coached him in high school in basketball. Um, his name is John, but we called him Tater. His name is Tater Horton. Uh, his wife has cancer, and she's probably just like 22, 23 years old probably been married a year and she's and she's got cancer so please be in prayer for her and then also uh, continue to pray for our missionaries pray for the, uh, mrs mitchell with her uh, spine injection on may 11th got an update about uh, ernest nichols he's doing better he's at home recovering from covid they're all in covid protocol um, but just pray for mrs nichols as she takes care of ernest um, and then also pray for I'm allowed to tell you, Allie St. Villas. How many of you think Miss St. Villas has a girl? Would you raise your hand? Think she has a girl? Okay. How many of you think she has a boy? Okay. All right. Allie St. Villas and Josh St. Villas has a girl. They are having a girl. So they found out, what was it, yesterday? The day before? 
Uh, so they're having a girl, so that's exciting. And pray for Mrs. Rueg. Uh, she's getting ever so close. I asked her one th- She has it down to the hour. Brian, I mean, how long? How long until the baby's here? May 2nd. So it could happen any moment, but May 2nd, okay? So pray for Mrs. Rueg. What is it? Supposedly. So pray for uh, Mama as the finish line gets cr- closer, okay? Uh, continue to pray for Emily. That's Stephanie Cook's cousin. Um, recovering from brain surgery, and so many more that we'll update you on after the service tonight. So we'll go ahead and pray for the offering, and then we'll continue with service. This evening, we thank you for the jobs and the health that you give us, that we can uh, work and provide for our families. As we give a small portion back to you, we ask you to bless it. Uh, further the work here at Cornerstone, as well as supporting our missionaries around the world, uh, we're thankful that we can see the reports of our missionaries, that we can see souls saved and lives changed globally, and that we can have a small part in that. We're thankful uh, to you for allowing us to do that and give back. We ask you to bless uh, Pastor Morton this evening, open up our hearts for what you have, uh, allow the Holy Spirit uh, to work uh, in Cornerstone this evening. In just name we pray. I never got to that point, so just in case you were wondering, that's, she does pretty good with that. So if you would turn to, uh, let's stand once again, we'll sing The Haven of Rest. We're going to sing all five verses on this song, The Haven of Rest, a beautiful song. I've anchored my soul in the haven of rest. My soul in sad exile was out on life's sea. My soul in sad exile was out on life's sea, so burdened with sin and distress, till I heard a sweet voice saying, make me your choice, and I entered the haven of rest. I then stormy deep in Jesus I'm safe evermore I yielded myself to his tender embrace and faith taking hold of the word my fetter The haven of rest is my Lord. I anchored my soul in the haven of rest. I'll sail the wide seas no more. The tempest. 
tempest may sweep or the wild stormy deep in jesus i'm safe evermore the song of my soul since the lord made me whole has been the old story so blessed of jesus who will save whosoever will have a home in the haven of rest i've anchored my soul in the haven of rest i'll sail the wide seas no more the tempest may sweep or the wild stormy deep in jesus i'm safe evermore how precious the thought that we all may recline like john the beloved and blessed on jesus strong arm where no tempest can harm secure in the haven of rest i've anchored my soul in the haven of rest i'll sail the white seas no more the tempest may sweep or the wild stormy deep in jesus i'm safe evermore verse five as the last here oh come to the savior he patiently waits to save by his power divine come anchor your soul in the haven of rest and say my beloved is mine i've anchored my soul in the haven of rest i'll sail the white seas no more the tempest may sweep or the wild stormy deep in jesus i'm safe evermore amen great singing once again and uh great song you can be seated and we'll have pastor come all right if you have your bible turn with me to romans romans chapter one romans chapter one uh, we read one verse last week in our study in ephesians and it kind of led us to romans chapter one we're speaking of the reprobate doctrine the reprobate mind doctrine what that means and uh, we started talking about that last week and uh, if you read ephesians and you read romans chapter one it, it's almost ties in together seamlessly as you read it and study it and we're talking about the reprobate doctrine tonight and uh, just a, a way of review we talked about some false beliefs about the reprobate doctrine a lot of different crazy beliefs out there about it some people think if you sin after you're saved, then you automatically become reprobate. That's false. Homosexuals and anyone guilty of the list of sins in Romans chapter 1 are automatically uh, reprobate and cannot be saved. That's false. And it's our job as man to determine who's reprobate and who's not. That's completely false as well. And so we looked at it last week. We talked about man is without excuse because of creation. Creation itself testifies of God's eternal power, God's eternal Godhead. And we talked about that. And then we talked about the, there's nothing new under the sun. So anytime anything seems like a new doctrine or a different teaching, it's just a matter of the world changing the truth into what they want it to be changed into. And we talked about it last week. Leave it to man. Leave it to fallen mankind to take that is that is incorruptible, God, 
and corrupt it into a form and fashion that they think God should, should look like. That resulted in a, a four-legged beast, a creeping thing, and also bird, a bird god. They changed the truth into a lie, and God definitely does not like sin, period, but he definitely does not like when man takes their sin and tries to justify it as truth. And we, we definitely talked about that last week. We're going to pick it up with, we're going to pick it up with um, where we left off last week. Go, go to uh, Romans chapter 1, verse number 26. Romans chapter 1, verse number 26. And this is what the Bible says. Romans chapter 1, verse 26, the Bible says this. For this cause... God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meat. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over. So twice already we've seen them. God gave them up, and now God gave them over. God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient some people would look at this uh, study about God giving them over and they would say how cruel I mean how cruel is a God that would give them over time out we established last week that that is not God's plan for man God's plan for man is not for them to defile themselves we laid it out last week that God God's plan and purpose is for what for us to possess our vessels as vessels unto honor pleasing to the Lord, and so that God could fill us and work in us and through us. It's not God's plan. God gave them over to their own lust and to their own flesh and to their own desires. Pastor Morton, does that mean that man can cross a line with God, refuse truth, reject God, and uh, re reject Him and continue in their sin and say no to God long enough that God would give them over to themselves and their own lust? Yes, that's what the Bible says. That's what the Bible says, and the application of that is we must be very, very careful with what we choose to do with our mind. And we, we talked about the mind a lot last week because to give over to a reprobate mind, it's a matter of the mind, but it began. Where did it begin? Did man just wake up one day, reprobate with a reprobate mind? No. It began with vain imaginations. And we talked about that last week. We'll not re-preach everything from last week. But look what it says in Romans 1.21. Because that, when they knew God, they had the testimony of creation, they had the witness that was present during their day, they glorified Him not as God. They glorified Him not as God, neither were thankful but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. They didn't just wake up one day and say, you know, I think I'll have a reprobate mind. I think I'll, I'll force God and cross the line with God that he'll give me over to burn in my own lust. No, it started first with the wrong mindset about God. They chose in their pride to reject the testimony of nature, to reject the testimony that's present in creation, to reject the witness and, and presence of the truth that they had, and did not acknowledge God in their, in their minds. Didn't retain the knowledge of God in their minds. Start off with vain imaginations, thinking that they could come up with a purpose for life and everything that exists today apart from God. And that's where it started and it ended with the verses we just read. God gave them up. And God gave them over. Look what it says in verse number 27. It says, <clears throat> And likewise, <clears throat> and likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense 
of their error, which was meat. I, I, I cannot fathom, I cannot wrap my mind around it. I, I've already told you, my, my testimony is I have family members that are involved in this sin, and you may, you may have people that are close to you, that are close to your heart, that are mi- mixed up and confused about this issue. But, but when man leaves the natural use, God's purpose and plan for life and families and reproduction, it, leaving the natural use of the woman, Adam and Eve, man and woman, and to, to burn amongst himself with mankind and man and woman and woman, that, that's wrong, it's wicked, it's sin. And the Bible clearly says that it's wrong and it's sin. You ever ask yourself the question, how in the, how in the world would someone get to the place where they abandon what is natural for what is unnatural? The verse tells us, burned in their lust. A lot of it is rooted in, in steeped in an unfiltered lust that has just burned and burned itself to the place where it's led them to where we're reading about right now a lot of it a lot of a lot of people that i I know personally that are involved in it started with a porn addiction started with a porn addiction that led them to the place of looking at even more wicked things and in their heart and mind they said no straight person would put this stuff that i'm looking at in front of their face friend yes they would your lust and your flesh would take you beyond anywhere you'd, you couldn't imagine you'd be. And it's, it's a lust that just keeps burning to the place where now you're doing something the Bible says isn't even natural. That's what the Bible says. The vile affection is what it's called. Vile affection. Leaving the natural use of the woman, burn their lust one toward another leaving the natural for the unnatural you know when god designed man and and a woman he designed he had a natural plan and that natural plan for a man and a woman was for reproduction it was for reproduction god's initial uh, instructions to adam and eve were what to be fruitful and multiply and a part of that being fruitful and multiply was the natural system that god set up and created reproduction do you know why the bible calls man and man and woman and woman unnatural because that's what it is it goes against the very laws of nature the laws of nature is that man and woman reproduce and and cause reproduce after their kind it is impossible whether you call that bearded dude with fishnet stockings a woman or not it is physically impossible for a man and man and woman and woman to reproduce naturally. It's impossible. And that's what the Bible is talking about, it not being natural. In Leviticus chapter 18, verse 22, the Bible says, Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is an abomination. In Leviticus chapter 20, and verse number 13, the Bible says, If a man also lie with mankind as he lieth with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. And in the Old Testament law, it carried the death penalty. That's how seriously God took it. And it certainly is an abomination. Look what it says in verse number 28. <clears throat> and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. The, these are people who know what's right. They know what's wrong. Anybody with half a brain can tell that sodomy and homosexuality is not natural. Doesn't make sense. But they purposefully chose to forget about God, not retain Him in their knowledge. Because they know that a holy God would never condone, support, encourage, or bless wickedness, because they they read Romans chapter 1 and Leviticus where it clearly speaks against it and condemns it and calls it abominable. So, so what's the answer? Just choose to reject it? Choose a Bible version that excludes any mention of it? Uh, buy a Bible that was written and produced by homosexuals? Say that God loves me any way, any way that I live? No. What do we do about it? We let God be true and we speak the truth in love and try to reach them with the gospel of Jesus Christ. A lot of people out there say that once someone turns to be homosexual, there's no more hope for them in the reprobate. I've heard a lot of stories of, of, of people that are entered in that lifestyle that the Lord has saved and changed their life. 
There is hope, and the gospel brings hope to even, even the hardened sinners that are out there. But look at it in verses 29 through 31. We witnessed the results. <clears throat> we witnessed the results of someone, uh, the results of a reprobate mind. We see a list of all the things that I believe a reprobate mind would desire and lust after. And look at verse number 29. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death. Not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Look, all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, uh, maliciousness, envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, all those things. And malignity is evil in nature, influence, or effect. That's what it means. Whispers, no, not a fact, no natural affection, implacable means not capable of being appeased, unmerciful. All those things, I believe, are what the flesh desires. Flesh desires. Look at it verse, what it says in verse number 32. Who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. What anyone should consider before wanting to give in to their lust and reject God over and over again is this. Sin always comes with the price tag. There's always consequences for our actions. What are some of those consequences? Well, the, the scripture tells us. Look what it says in uh, verse number... Didn't write the reference down, man. Oh, verse number 32. It says this, for knowing the judgment of God, the judgment of God, sin results in the judgment of God. And uh, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna have to give an account of our lives to God one day. We're going to have to stand and face Him with what we've done in our bodies. But look what it says also. Another consequence of sin, sin results in the death penalty. Results in the death penalty. Uh, look what it says in verse 32. That they which commit such things are worthy of death. We already understand this. As sinners, we deserved death. That was the penalty for sin. But I'm thankful that God saved us and changed us and paid that price for our sins. But look, let's see, let's see this. We see through our previous study, everything that we studied before, we see that one can be reprobate in their knowledge concerning the truth. Look what look, go to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 8 now. 2 Timothy 3, verse 8. 2 Timothy 3, verse 8. <clears throat> Notice what the Bible says in 2 Timothy 3, 8. The Bible says, Now as Janus and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also, notice this phrase, resist the truth, men of corrupt minds. Read the rest of the verse to yourself as I read it out loud. Here we go. Reprobate concerning the faith. Reprobate concerning the faith. What on earth does that mean? What, is it, or what, what does it mean to be reprobate, reprobate concerning the faith? Well, I think we'll have an answer here in a moment. Reprobate means resisting the truth, resisting the truth. And we see it here referenced in 2 Timothy 3, 8, where it says, these also resist the truth. Reprobate also means a corruption of the mind. We've talked about that in our previous study. It starts with the mind, and the mind begins thinking vainly, and it progresses to the place where it's turned over to reprobate mind. So reprobate means a corruption of the mind or vain imaginations, and we see that referenced here in 2 Timothy 3.8, where it says, men of corrupt minds, corrupt minds. Janus and Jambres were specifically guilty of being reprobate concerning the faith. What does being reprobate concerning the faith mean? Well, we apply the definition 
the definition of what reprobate means, and we learn that it's someone who continuously rejects and refuses the truth concerning a saving faith in Jesus Christ. Pastor Morton, are you suggesting that a lost person, after hearing the gospel and given an invitation and given an opportunity, can reject the gospel to the place where they're hardened to the gospel? Where they refuse the gospel to the place where the Lord says, you know what, you rejected me. I've given you so many opportunities to get saved. Have it your way. Well, let's read John 3 and we'll find out the answer. John chapter 3, look at it with me in verses 18 through 21. <clears throat> John chapter 3, verses 18 through 21. The Bible says this, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him but that the world through him might be saved. Before we go on and read the rest of the verses, okay, we need to establish that God's purpose and plan was not to condemn the world, but to save the world. That was his purpose and plan. Look at it in verse number 18. He that believeth on him is not, what? Condemned. But he that believeth not, what's the next three words? is condemned already. Keep that in your mind as we circle back to it. Is condemned already. Because, why is he condemned already? Because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. Neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. But those that believe not are condemned already. Keep that in your mind. We consider what the word condemned means, what it's defined as meaning in the dictionary. It means to be declared reprehensible, wrong or evil. It means to be pronounced guilty and sentenced to punishment, especially sentenced to death. Notice this part of the definition, though. It means to officially be declared unfit for use. That's what the word means, straight from the dictionary. It means to be declared unfit for use. The biblical equivalent to what we're talking about right now in the dictionary is officially declared unfit for use. It's reprobate. It's reprobate. Janus and Jambres fought against God. They fought against Moses, the man of God, so much and even fought against the truth to the place where they were declared useless. Reprobate. Here's the application so far. Sinners today that may be here that don't know Christ as their Savior, that are lost, stop saying no to God. Stop saying no to God and to his word and stop saying no to his spirit and just receive Jesus Christ as your savior. Because if you say no enough, you could become reprobate to the faith like Janus and Jambres were. To the saved person today, to all of us that are saved, we need to stop quenching the Holy Spirit. Stop quenching the Holy Spirit. Stop resisting the Holy Spirit. Stop plugging our ears to the truth because we could become useless for God's service even as someone that's saved and knows Christ as our Savior. I'm going to probably introduce this next one and we'll stop here tonight. We see through the first study last week, we saw that one can become reprobate. One can become reprobate concerning their mind. But the second thing that we see is we just talked about was one can become reprobate concerning the saving faith of Jesus Christ. Then here's a third one. One can become reprobate unto every good work. One can become a reprobate unto every good work. Turn with me to Titus chapter 1 verse 16 and we'll wind down tonight. Titus chapter 1 verse 16. Titus chapter 1 16. <clears throat> the Bible says this, they profess that they know God. But in works, they deny him, being abominable and disobedient. And notice this phrase, and unto every good work reprobate. And unto every good 
work reprobate. And I'm going to lay a, lay a foundation here. We're not going to get through it tonight, but I'm going to lay a foundation here in Titus, and we're going to look at this and then come to the climax of verse number um, 8 that we just read. Actually, verse number 16 that we just read. Tur- turn to Titus chapter, uh, Titus chapter 1, if you would. Titus chapter 1, and we'll work our way through it. Verses 1 through 8, we're not going to spend time on it. Verses 1 through 8, it deals with the qualifications of pastors and, and ministers. Verse number 9 uh, records Paul's admonishment to pastors, ministers, and, and even Christians today to hold fast, hold fast the faithful word. Hold fast the faithful word in verse number 9. It says, holding fast the faithful word as he hath been taught. Why? For what purpose? Well, for twofold, a twofold purpose, that everyone should hold fast the, the faith, hold fast uh, what he's been taught, the faithful word. For a twofold purpose, the first one is this, to exhort others, to exhort others and themselves in the truth, and to convince others and themselves of the truth. It says that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. That was the purpose of why we should hold fast the word of God and the truth that it teaches. Verses 10 through 12 expresses the fact that there are many deceivers, uh, gainsayers, who according to Paul, whose mouths must be stopped. Whose mouths must be stopped. Why? Why? Because these deceivers, look at it. Look at it in verses 10 through 12. Why should their mouths be stopped? For what, it, what look what the Bible says in verse uh, verse number verse number ten. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision, whose mouths must be stopped. Why? Who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not, for filthy lucre's sake. For filthy lucre's sake, they're teaching things they shouldn't teach, and they're subverting whole houses. Let me ask you a question. Who would do this? Who would do this? Why would anybody purposely deceive others and teach things that they shouldn't? Why would they do that? Well, for filthy lucre's sake. The Bible says for filthy lucre's sake. Because they're wicked, reprobate, greedy, and perverse. That's why they would do that. Why would parents allow? Think with me for a moment. Just on the news recently. Why would parents allow drag queens To read stories to their kids. Did you ever think in a million years we'd be reading articles about that? Why would parents allow their uh, kids to sit down and have a story read to them by a drag queen? Because their parents are either fools or they were taught from their parents that it's okay. Why would a man want to dress up like a woman and drag and read to kids? Because he's a wicked pervert that has evil intentions in his mind. That's why. Why would the public school system employ radical, race-baiting, liberal, communistic, socialistic teachers? Because they represent the school's values. That's why. Why would teachers be allowed to remain employed at their prospective schools after they encourage sexual deviancy, sexual activity, gender alterations, gender fluidity against their parents' wishes or knowledge? Because many, not all, not all of them, many involved in the school system, school boards, and school curriculum developers, many school administrators and their staff are totally morally bankrupt and are certainly void of judgment and possibly reprobate themselves. Not all of them. There's good teachers in public school. There's good Christians in public school. Not all of them. But man, when you look around today and you see the nonsense that's taking place, you ask yourself why. Because reprobate minds, that's why. In verses 13 and 14 in, in our text in Titus chapter 1, it says this. In verses 13 and 14 it says, This witness is true, wherefore rebuke them sharply, that they may be sound in the faith, not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth. We're instructed by Paul to rebuke them sharply. To rebuke them sharply. Who would be tempted to believe these lies? And to instruct folks in the danger that there is 
in following after man-made fables and traditions. And we'll end with this. Verse number 15. This says this. <clears throat> unto the pure, all things are pure. But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving, it is nothing pure. But even their mind and conscience is defiled. We don't have time to dig through this. We're going to dig through it next week. But let me just begin to, to talk about it. To the pure, all things are pure. To someone who's saved and has the Holy Spirit of God leading them to the truth. They understand what the Bible is talking about. They understand what we're talking about tonight. They understand they can look at that the drag queens and everything going on in the world today. And they know that's wicked and they know what's pure. They know the difference. Man, but that's not always the case. To the pure, all things are pure. But what does the verse go on to say? But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. Pure represents perfect and, and just holy and righteous. It's no, it should be no surprise to us that someone that's not saved and knows Jesus Christ as their Savior has no Holy Spirit of God living inside of them. There's no witness there. It should not surprise us that they look at us and think we're the weirdos. They look at Christians today and they look at us and say we're nuts and off our rockers. Nope, we know better than that. We know what's pure, we know what's right, and we've got to stand on that. And we'll stop there tonight. We'll, we've got plenty more to say, but we'll, we'll do that next week. We'll stop right there and pick it up next week. I want to take out the prayer list tonight and to kind of go over some prayer uh, requests. Um, continue to pray for uh, the Walter Garling family as they're dealing with the loss of their loved one. Uh, pray for the Merediths. Uh, pray for Kevin Peck's uh, neck as he continues to deal with that, the pain there. Pray for Minnie Epperson as she was moved to memory care unit for her dementia. And to pray that they, she gets acclimated there and settled down. Continue to pray for Miss Kay Turner. She's got that inner eye infection and she's dealing with that. And I'm sure there's pain involved there. So continue to pray for her. Pray for Mrs. Ray. She has an appointment coming up on the 30th at 9 a.m. And... Uh, Let's see here. Pray for Barbara Miller as she has uh, she had a doctor's appointment and she's waiting. Hannah, did you have any update on her? Did she get the results back yet? Okay, so just continue to pray for um, Miss Miller and then so many others on our prayer list. Um, any update, Mrs. Johnson, on Andrew Williams or Dorothy Henderson? Okay. Oh, good. Praise the Lord. All right, anything else? A lot of sickness is going around, so pray for uh, the sickness that's going around. And, and anything else? Anything else? Okay, well, we have about seven minutes till the top of the hour. Let's just take some time to pray, and I'll come back in a, in a few minutes and close this out in prayer. Let's just take a couple minutes uh, silently in prayer, and then I'll come back and dismiss this tonight in prayer. If you would take out that prayer list and then uh, just spend a few minutes in prayer.
Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you tonight for bringing us here safely together. Lord, I thank you for the word of God and what it teaches us. I pray that we would just be students of your word and spend time daily in it, Lord, and feed upon your word every day. And Lord, I pray you'd be with all those that are sick. So many people with cancer, please be with Matt Price's uh, nephew's um, fiance, Lord, who has cancer. Doesn't look good, Lord. They're stopping the treatments on her. I pray that your hand would be upon her. Uh, Lord, we know that you're the great physician and you could heal her. We want your will to be done, Lord. Just please be with um, John Horton's wife, the young wife that's newlyweds, just, just been married shortly, Lord. Just found out she has cancer. I pray that you'd be with them. Just strengthen her body and help the treatments to do what it's supposed to, Lord. And I pray you'd be with the Meredith as they recover from their injuries. I pray that you'd be with the family as they um, pray for wisdom about what to do next with them. And I pray that you would just uh, be with Mrs. Mitchell as her spinal injection procedures coming up, Lord, in May. I pray that you just help that to do what it's supposed to, Lord, give her comfort, give her mobility. I pray you'd be with um, Mrs. Nichols, Lord, as she's dealing with uh, the COVID that's in her home, Lord, and also her son, Ernest. I pray you just help him to get over what he has and recover, Lord. And I pray that you'd be with our church. I pray that you continue to meet the needs uh, financially, physically, emotionally, spiritually that we have, Lord. Help souls to continue to be saved. Please be with our missionaries that we support, Lord, doing your work and the field that you called them to. I pray you keep them safe and bless their ministries and bless their labors, Lord, with souls here in the gospel and getting saved. And we'll keep them safe, Lord. If inflation is hurting us here, Lord, it's certainly hurting folks around the world. I pray that you would just put a hedge of protection about their ministries, around their families, and just keep them safe from any enemy that faces them, Lord. And I pray that you would just continue to work through us, your people, as we give to missions. And, Lord, I pray that we get a, a heart and burden even more for it, Lord, to get the gospel around every soul that we can. I pray you'd be with our missions conference coming up. I pray you bless the speakers, keep them safe as they travel in, and help them to challenge us and stir our hearts for the gospel and for getting it around the world. Just please be with uh, Emily, the young lady that's uh, dealing with uh, the seizures and recovering from brain surgery. I pray you help her. Please be with Kevin Peck's daughter, Kevin Peck's neck, and uh, his uh, mother's boyfriend, Jay. Lord, I pray you'd be with all those in the prayer list, Lord, that are hurting that are struggling, that need you, Lord. I pray you wrap your arms around them, comfort them, Lord, strengthen them, and help them feel your presence in a very real way. We love you, and we're trusting you with our futures, with our lives, with our souls, and I pray you keep us safe as we go home and bring us back safely again on Sunday. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, well, thank you so much for being here tonight. Lord bless you. We'll see you Sunday.